Hello folks. So today in this particular video, we are going to talk about IAM users. Now as we talked about it in the last video, when you create an account, you enter into it as a root account. Now that is something which is discouraged by AWS because root account has all the permission to do anything in your account, which is very bad from a security point of view. So this kind of widespread access is normally given to only few people in the organization and they have to be something like top level AWS admins. Then those admins will be creating some further IAM users and provide them proper access to use AWS resources according to their role in the organization. So let's see how to create an IAM user and we'll first create an IAM user with administrator access and then going forward we'll see that how to restrict its access by using proper policies. So let's start. Now you access IAM module by just going into your services and hitting on IAM module under security and compliance section. Once you click there you will find your IAM dashboard and here you will be able to see the current resources that we have created in IAM module. Okay so first few things before going to IAM user. The IAM users would be able to sign in through this particular link. So rather than just going to aws.amazon.com and providing the email id and password IAM users would be using this particular link to log in with their own credentials. Now this link might look different in your account. That is because I'm using here alias Ashish R Pandey. In this space you might be getting your AWS account ID. If you want to change it to make it more easy to remember, you can just go and click on the customize and provide here your alias name. Since I have already customized it, so it's not giving me the option, though it is giving me an option to delete this alias. Having said that, if you go, if you are seeing your own account ID here, some numbers, big number here, you just need to customize and give your unique alias name. Please make sure that it is unique because this URL has to be unique and it has to be your account. Now having said that, let's go and see how to create users. Now after getting that out of way, let's go and see create an IAM user. Users. Here you can see all the existing list of users and then we'll be adding a user. Click on add user, give it a name. So I'm going to give it a test name and now to every user you can provide two kinds of access. One is programmatic access, second is AWS management console access. So right now the way we are using AWS it is called console access. But this is not the only way to access your AWS resources. You can access your AWS resources using command line interface as well. We'll talk about that in a separate video. You can use AWS resources from inside your own program using software development kits. You can access your AWS resources using some APIs. So when you are using your AWS resources through command line interface, through software development kits or through using some APIs, that is basically called a programmatic access to your AWS account. Normally to access your AWS account programmatically, you need some extra information in form of something called access key and secret access key. Now that access key and secret access key would be provided to an IAM user only when he has been given this programmatic access. So when you provide this programmatic access, this particular user here in our case test user would be given a set of access key ID and secret access key, ID key as well along with the username and password and using this access key ID and secret access key ID they would be able to access AWS resources programmatically. So in this case I am going to give both the access console access as well as programmatic access but basically it will depend on what kind of user you are going to create an account for. Then what about password? The password you can auto generate or you can just go for custom password and decide a password for the guy. So I'm going ahead with the auto generated password. Now once you create this, basically the account admin who is actually creating this IAM user, he knows the password of the guy. So if you want to give him the liberty to change his password and you want to enforce this password reset, then go and check this box and ask him to require the password reset. So basically this activity will normally be done by AWS account admins. Whenever a new user comes in, the account admin will be creating an IAM user for him and provide these credentials that is generating to that particular guy. Now let's go to the next, which is the permission section. Now we have to assign proper permission to that particular user and assigning permission is done by using policies. So what is a policy? Policy is nothing but a set of permission. Set up permission to use AWS services and resources. 
So there are multiple ways to provide these permission and policies to a particular user. Basically, we also call it attaching the policy or attaching the permission to a particular user. There are multiple ways here. There are three you can see here itself. One is put a user into a group where it belongs. And in that case, you would have already attached some policies to that group and all those policies of the group would be applied to the user as well. That's one way. Another one is if you already have an existing user and you want to give the same permission to this new user as well, then you can copy permission from the existing users. So here you can use whatever user you want to copy the permission from and set the similar permission to this new user as well. About the group, right now I don't have any group in my account. Later on we'll see that how to create groups and how to assign policies and then we'll see that how to add a user in a particular group. Now the third one is attach existing policies directly. Now AWS has created a lot of policies already. So they've created a lot of policies which, uh, which would be normally required in an account with respect to every service. So all these AWS managed type services are basically created by AWS. So whenever you see this box, they are basically the policies created by AWS. There are also customer managed policies, which means we can also create a policy in AWS account and use them, but we'll come to that later. Right now I'm going to use the existing policies and assign those policies to that particular user. So since we said that we are going to create an admin user, admin user means we are going to give him all the possible permission. So this first policy itself which is administrator access, which is actually a job function of admins, which provides full access to AWS services and resources. We are going to attach this policy with that particular user. So I'll just select it and then I'm going to next. Now this is a review section that means you just have a look on what all you are going to create and then if it looks fine then we can go ahead. Now one thing to note here is that though we selected only one policy which is administrator access here we can see there are two policies attached to this. This second policy which is called IAM user change password policy is here because we clicked on the checkbox where we said that okay reset the password allow the user to reset his own password and that is why we need to assign this particular policy as well with that user. So this looks nice we can go ahead and create a user. Now this is the last step. Now we can download .csv. This is basically a credential file where the necessary informations are given. Uh, this is credentials9.csv in my case because I've got multiple files in my same folder with the name credentials. So I'll just open it. Okay, now here you see it is giving me all the necessary information in form of an Excel file. So this is the username, this is the password, this is the access key and this is the secret access key. Now you should make these things uh, confidential. You should not share your access key and secret access key or username and password with anybody. If you think it, this information has been leaked, then you better delete the particular user or reset the credentials. This same information is also shown on your web console. So this is the user, access ID and then the secret access key. You can also see the password here. Now you can also send him an email mentioning that account has been created for you and maybe separately you can send him his credential, his username, password and access key and secret access key. Remember that this access key and secret access key is there because we assign programmatic access to that user. If you don't give him that programmatic access, this access key and secret access key would not be available for him. So I'm just going to copy this password and let's see that how to access as an IAM user. Since I don't want to log out from this account, ideally I should log out and use this particular link to log in again, but I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is I will use an incognito window so that it doesn't matter whether I've logged into with my root account or not. So in a new incognito window, I'll be using this console first. Here you go. And here you see this login screen looks a bit different. Here my account ID or alias has been given already. And now I just need to provide the username and password. So my username is test and my password I can copy from here. Again, all this information is already downloaded in my credentials.csv. I can copy from there as well. So the same thing you can see here as well. You can copy from here. Then go to that incognito window and I'm going to paste my password here. Then sign in. Now this we are signing in as an IAM user. If you want to sign in using your root account, this is a link for that. 
okay go ahead and sign in as an im user now since while creating this im user account we clicked on that required password reset so it will ask me to first reset the password so my old password i have copied new password i can give here again okay i have changed my password and confirm password change now here you go so you see here now it's written here test at ashish pandey so this indicates basically this is a test is an im user and at the rate ashish pandey is my account name now whatever i do from here this is actually done by the test user so all my actions etc would be tracked as if the test im user is actually doing this now since we have given test user admin rights using that administrator access policy so it can use all the resources all the services that it has in that sense it's similar to the root account so it can go to any service it can create any service launch any service modify any service whatever it wants it can do because it has been associated with an administrator access policy so please keep that in mind now let's see how to create an im user without admin policy and may be restricted to a particular service so let's go to im module again okay now my number of users has increased to be 5 and i'm going to create one more user so i'm going to call it non admin and this time i'm not going to give him programmatic access as well just to see the difference also just for the sake of knowing the difference i'm not going to auto generate the password i'm going to give him the custom password so i'm going to give him some password and also i'm not going to give him the required password re reset so if you compare it with the, my previous user account i'm changing all these things it's not because i don't want to make him admin it's just that so that we know the difference and we understand that by clicking on these checkboxes what is the impact so i'm not selecting the required password reset next is permission again i'm not using these two steps and i'm using attach existing policies directly now this time suppose i want to give him full access to s3 but nothing else so i will go and search for s3 full here you go you have got a policy already made for you from aws so use this particular policy go ahead to next and here you can see you can review this particular user we are not requiring password reset we have given our own custom password the access is only management console access just with the password and the policy attaches just s3 full access nothing else okay if you remember it has not even got im user change for password policy so i'll create a user now here you go it looks similar in the sense that you can download .csv this is my trend credentials .csv but here you can see that there is nothing no access key no secret access key and no password access key are absent because we didn't give him programmatic access the password is absent because we opted for custom password rather than auto generated password so the same thing in credentials.csv this is my old one this is my new one so here also you see username and just the console login link the password since i gave custom password so i should have remembered and then no, no access key and no secret access key so this guy cannot use aws programmatically because for that it will require access key and secret access key also remember that it's non-admin user it has been given just to access s3 so s3 full access is there other than that it cannot use any other service let's check that out let's verify that so first log into this i'm using new incognito window again and i am going through this console the username is non-admin and password i remember so non-admin password i will provide and just sign in okay here you go non-admin at ashish pandey now let's see first can i access s3 bucket as a non-admin user let's check that out go to s3 uh, create a bucket okay it seems here i can create a bucket here something like say z bucket 3 even if you are able to see that this means you already have a read access and then i'll just use the east ohio i'll just create it because i'm just checking that whether i have got permission to create bucket or not so here you go zig bucket 3 that we created just now okay so we have got s3 full access and now we have verified that but what about other services for example ec2 so we are on the ec2 dashboard now and here you see you are not authorized to describe running instances you are not authorized to describe dedicated host so i am not able to see any information even so this is exactly how you limit a particular im user to access only limited services so most of the time you go to an organization to work 
you would always be given a restricted access until unless you are going there for account admin role okay so here we are right now in my account i've got six users and you can go through all these descriptions to delete a particular user again it's very easy you just select that particular user and go and delete the user to see the details of a particular user you can again click on the user and go and find out the properties associated with that so I, as I said that anything that you create on AWS becomes AWS resource. So even an IAM user is also a resource and every resource would have a name. That name is called AWS resource namespace ARN. So this is the ARN of this particular user. Just look at the format of it. This number is basically the account ID and here you can see all the permissions which are attached to this particular user or the policies, the groups in which it belongs. Right now it doesn't belong to any group, the security credentials. The password etc if you want to manage if you want to change the password so we are here logged in as a root account we can go and change the password and some more information about this particular user then the access advisor so this is particularly a feature which is used to understand that which user is using which feature and all those kind of things so that's all that we have in iam users in the next video we are going to talk about iam groups so see you soon in the next video thank you for watching